If you're a current Synology Quick Connect or even an OpenVPN user, there's another option that you can use for remotely accessing your Synology NAS and local network. It requires no port forwarding, has an extremely simple setup process, will perform faster than Synology Quick Connect, and provides better security. So the question is, why aren't you using Tailscale? But before we answer that question, let's look at what Tailscale is, how to set it up, how to customize it, and then you'll see for yourself if you should or shouldn't use it. Now, Tailscale is built on top of the WireGuard VPN protocol and simplifies the process of managing and implementing a VPN server. It's designed to be a point-to-point -point VPN, which basically means that devices can connect directly to each other as opposed to a traditional VPN server where all traffic is sent through the VPN server. Tailscale says this can reduce latency and provide faster and more reliable connections. Now, this may or may not be helpful for you as a home user, but it's important to understand because it'll come up a little later in the video. So let's look at how to set up Tailscale and then we'll get to that. Okay, so if you log into DSM, the first thing that we're gonna do is open up the package center and then we're gonna search for Tailscale and we will install it. If you're using Synology's firewall, you'll have to open up this port so you can select okay and then it will run through and finish installing the package. And as soon as it's installed, you can select open. At this point, you're gonna to have to log in with your Tailscale account. So you have to create a Tailscale account. As soon as you do, you can select this authenticate button and then it will authenticate your Synology session directly into your Tailscale account. Okay, so as soon as you get to this point, believe it or not, Tailscale is configured. What you can see here is that we have our DSM instance and then we have an IP address here. This IP address, as soon as you connect to the Tailscale VPN on another device, will be used to access your Synology NAS. So what I'm actually gonna do here is I'm gonna connect to a different network and I'll show you that. All right, so I just set up a different device and I'm connected to a different network. And what you'll see is that if I refresh this page to get to my Synology NAS, I won't be able to get to it because I'm no longer on that network. I will also show you that if I paste in that IP address that we had inside of Tailscale, I will not be able to access the NAS either. All right, so what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna connect to Tailscale. And as soon as I connect to Tailscale, what you'll see is if we access this and go to the page, we will get to our DSM instance. So we're connected to Tailscale. We use the Tailscale IP address from this section here, and we are able to access our NAS, we get to it. Okay, now from a setup process, that's it. As soon as you configure Tailscale and sign into your account, your Synology NAS will be accessible. To access it, you'd connect to the Tailscale VPN server on whatever device you're using, then connect to the NAS at the IP address provided inside of Tailscale like we just did. If your only goal is to access your Synology NAS, that's all you need to do. But we're gonna look at a few ways that you can enhance the functionality, and the first step is gonna be configuring local subnet access. This will allow you to access your NAS on its local IP address rather than the IP address inside of Tailscale which is tremendously helpful if you're using any of Synology's application. You'll even be able to access other devices on your local network as well by configuring this. This step will transform Tailscale into a more traditional VPN, meaning that it'll perform like OpenVPN or WireGuard and provide the same functionality, but without any of the complicated setup. Okay, so we are back inside of DSM, and in order to configure this, we are going to have to SSH into the NAS. In order to set that up, you are just gonna open the control panel, go to terminal and SNMP, and then we are gonna enable the SSH service. You can apply this, and then what we're gonna do, you have to make sure if you're using Synology's firewall that you allow the port, and then what we are going to do is if you're using Mac OS, you can just open up the uh, terminal directly, but inside of Windows PowerShell, we are going to type the command SSH and then your username at the IP address of your NAS. From there, you will type in your password and then you will be connected to the actual Synology NAS through SSH. So what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna just have to run one command. I have this command in the written instructions, which will be in the description of the video. But what you're gonna see here is we're just running a tail scale up command, and then this advertise routes is the key here. So as you can see, the IP address of my NAS is 192.168.254.205. So what I'm gonna be doing is actually advertising the entire 192.168.254 subnet. That's what this here means. So. If you're using a 192.168.1 subnet, you would have to change this to be 192.168.1.0 forward slash 24. Finally, this advertise exit node, we're gonna to get to that in a minute, and then we're just gonna reset the connection. So as soon as you run this and type in your password, 
you're not gonna get anything back, but you'll see in the actual tail scale uh, console here that we now have subnets and we have exit nodes. So that command that we just ran here, advertise route, that's where you're gonna get subnets from and advertise exit node, that's where you're gonna get the exit node from. So what you can do is inside of here, you can actually select the three dots here and then select edit route settings. And what you'll see is we have one route that can be used. If you select this and you save it, what you'll do is you'll be able to access anything on that 192.168.254, whatever you configured subnet, as soon as you connect to Talscale. So I'm gonna jump off of this network, jump on another one, and then I'll show you that. Okay, so we are on another network. We are disconnected from Talscale. And if I refresh this page here, what you will see is that we cannot access the NAS. So now I'm gonna go and connect to Talscale. And as soon as I do and the network changes, we will be able to access the NAS through its local IP address. So that is what the subnet change that we made allowed us to do. Now that's helpful if you're using anything on the NAS in terms of its local IP address. So even if you have a mapped network drive on a laptop and you leave your current location and you connect to Talscale, it will continue to work because it can access the actual local subnet, which it couldn't do before. All right, so after configuring local subnet access, we also configured the exit node in that same command that we ran. An exit node is designed to route traffic through the network where Talscale is located. You can think of it as a full tunnel VPN. With a full tunnel VPN, all traffic is routed through the VPN, so your external IP address when connected to it would be the IP address where Talscale is configured. So where we configure that exit node, that is what your external IP address would be. With a split tunnel VPN, which is how Talscale normally works, only traffic destined for either the local subnet or a Talscale device would be routed through Talscale. Think of it as all traffic going through Talscale or only some of it going through Talscale. An exit node is helpful if you're on public Wi-Fi and want to secure your connection, but there are other scenarios as well where you'd want to route traffic this way. All right, so let's look at configuring an exit node. So you got to go back to the um, Talscale console here. And then what we're going to do is inside of that same section, the edit route settings section, you can select use as exit node. And then what that would allow you to do is on whatever device you're connected to inside of Talscale, you will be able to select to use this exit node. So I'll quickly show you that now. So I just went to Google and I said, what is my IP address? And you will see that the last two digits here are the current network that I'm connected to. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to connect to Talscale and I'm gonna use the Synology NAS as an exit node. And as soon as you are connected. If you refresh the page, what you will see is our IP address changed. So all of our traffic is currently being routed through our Talscale server. Okay, so the last thing we have to discuss here is outbound traffic from your Synology NAS. There are many scenarios where this might come up, but a basic example is backing up one Synology NAS to another using a tool like Hyper Backup. And in that scenario, routing all the traffic through Talscale. Due to the way permissions are handled in DSM-7, a command has to be run to grant permission for outbound connections. Keep in mind, this is only for outbound connections and inbound traffic will work properly without this configuration. Okay, so what I did at this point is I added a second Synology NAS to it, uh, to our account, and this is the IP address for it. And then what I did is I went into uh, Hyper Backup and I created a new backup task for it and I tried to actually log into that IP address, so we're connected to Talscale. That is the IP address for this uh, secondary Synology NAS instance that is running Hyper Backup Vault, and we should be able to back up this NAS to the outside NAS here. Um, however, what you're gonna see is we can't actually connect to it. This is because we don't currently have outbound connections working. Okay, so what we're gonna do with this step, because this is the way that Talscale recommends that you do it, is inside of the control panel, we're going to create a trigger task here as a user defined script. We'll call the task tail scale. We're gonna change the user to be root and we're gonna set this as boot up. From there in the task settings here, we're gonna paste in this command. It'll be in the written instructions and it'll be in the tail scale written instructions because that is where I initially found this. And then you can select okay here. And after configuring that, what we have to do is just reboot our NAS. So I'm gonna reboot it and we'll be back in a second. Okay, so the NAS is rebooted. We are back to this setup page. I just updated everything. And if this works, we should be able to select login here and get brought to the login section 
for DSM. Okay, there you go. So we're not gonna go any further, but I just wanted to show you that we couldn't connect and now we can. And the reason we can is because we ran that user defined script. Now I said earlier in the video that for quick connect users and possibly even open VPN users, tail scale might be a better option. Here's why. For Quick Connect, you're generally gonna be routing your traffic through a relay service, which is a fancy way of saying through Synology servers. This is extremely slow in certain cases, and using Talescale will drastically improve the performance when you're accessing your NAS. The reason is because Talescale is a traditional WireGuard VPN. It just has a management layer on top of it. The downside to using Talescale is you still need to connect to the VPN, so for external sharing, or even a scenario where many people have to access the NAS, you're introducing an additional layer there in terms of connectivity and potentially fees if you drop out of the free tier. For OpenVPN, it's a little different. It really comes down to simplicity. OpenVPN is a little cumbersome in the sense that you need the certificate file, it needs to be configured properly, you need to do port forwarding, and it's just a more involved process that also requires more upkeep. With Talescale, you literally connect to your account and then you can start to use it. Now it's not like Talescale is the perfect solution either since it requires Talescale servers to be online to maintain connectivity. Unlike OpenVPN where the VPN will stay online as long as the local network where the VPN server is hosted is online, Talescale requires the VPN server to stay online and the Talescale servers to stay online as well. Plus, if you don't fall into the free tier, you're introducing new costs. Some users also have privacy concerns as a third party is managing access to and from your local network. All of these disclaimers are ultimately items that will or will not help determine if you should or shouldn't use Talescale. The main point I wanna make is it's something that you should consider. Though it's not the perfect tool for everyone, it is the perfect tool for some people though. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time.